sure that everybody knows basic shading, but I'm gonna go over it anyway because maybe some people need to be taught. So first what I do is I go over to the magic wand tool and I click where I put the neck hole, I hold down control, and I click anywhere but on the shirt. That way it's selected everything but the shirt. And then you go to edit, and from edit, <laughs> you click invert selection, and now it's on the shirt. It just makes it easier for shading, that way you don't have to like do the extra erasing stuff. And now you're going to click a new layer. And you can either shade with black, or you can shade with just a darker color blue, uh, depending on your shirt color. But I personally shade with black just because I find it a lot easier. We're going to start off with some basic box shading. You basically just go around the edges of the shirt and make like a box. You know, that's just basic box shading. You can make your brush size whatever you want. I usually go for around 20 to like 15. And then you just do this around the entire shirt. So once you've done it around the entire shirt, uh, you can go to effects, blurs, and click Gaussian blur. Uh, you can blur it to whatever you want. I don't really like have a specific number for this, so I just do whatever I personally think looks good. <clears throat> and from here, you're gonna double click the shading layer. And in the blend mode, click overlay. And now you can adjust it and just make the shading look how you want it to look. I like this color, so I'm gonna keep it like that. And that's your first basic shading. Okay, so now that we have some basic um, box shading, the shirt's kind of shaded, but I personally like to shade my shirts more just because I think it looks better. So now we're gonna click new layer again, and uh, I'm still gonna stick with black, but this time I'm gonna go to the shapes tool and make sure you're on rectangle and the shape is filled. And what you're gonna do is like basically um, make rectangles like along the sides of the shirt, not in the center, or not like at the edge and not where the neck hole is, but just on the sides. And do this for the entire shirt. Once you've done it for the entire shirt, it should look similar to this. And so now we're going to go to effects, go to tools, and use the smudge tool. Ignore I have two of everything, it's just a stupid thing that I did. <laughs> We're basically going to smudge up the rectangles to make them look feathery. Um, so what you're gonna do is start from the very top of the rectangle. Also you can have your settings however you want. I usually have my pressure around 50 and my size of my brush around like 5 to 8. Or you can have it larger, but that's what I prefer. And you're gonna click and drag like this to create a feathery look. And you're gonna do that again and again all along the rectangle. And do it for both sides of it and every other rectangle that you did. Once you're done, it should look something like this. And now you're gonna click OK. And there you go. Uh, now you're gonna go back and double click the other shading layer. You're gonna go to blend mode and click overlay again and adjust the opacity to however you think or whatever you think looks good to you. Um, don't do anything like this. You wanna at least show the shading. Cause then it brings more attention to the shirt. And then it'll look something like this. And that's the other part to shading that I do. Okay, so for line work, it's basically like the waistband of the shirt and of the neckline. I'm not sure what it's called for the neckline, but we're basically going to be doing that right now. So what you're going to do is get a new layer, and this time you're going to go to the line tool. And I really suggest just having a brush width of one. And what you're gonna do is go to the edge of the shirt and go a few pixels up, maybe to a little bit above the red 
um, line and basically drag a line all across it and bend it to make it curve like with the shirt similar to this and then since this like back part inside of the shirt for me at least isn't curved I can just do a straight line and you're gonna repeat this for the sleeve and you're gonna repeat it for the neck hole okay so once you're done it should look similar to this <laughs> okay so now that you're done with that you're gonna double click on the layer and once again adjust the blend mode to overlay and uh you can adjust the opacity to whatever you want but make sure that the lines are still visible so i'd say something close to this oh it did not load something close to this or maybe a little bit lighter and so now you're gonna shade the waistband part that way it sticks out more and looks more like a waistband so to do that you're gonna make another line right above it and you're gonna bend that along with the line below it and basically just repeat what you did for the lines but like a pixel above the actual line if that makes sense <laughs> okay so once you're done with that you're gonna go to Gaussian blur again and I really recommend moving your blur to around three or two or four whatever you think looks good I'm gonna adjust mine to three this time and you're gonna double click this layer Let's go to overlay again and adjust the overlay and I don't recommend making this too light you want to make this visible something similar to this it adds a lot of detail to the shirt and now we're gonna go for some more detail this is optional but I personally love doing this to my shirt so i'm gonna do it to this one what you're gonna do is make another new layer and this time you're gonna go to your brush tool instead of the line tool and you're just gonna make lines around the shirt band or waistband um and make them pretty close together and just repeat this all along this along this and then a curved way and along this as well so once you're done, it should look similar to this. Uh, it's not perfect, and I also got lazy here and just used the um, narrow line thingy but jiggy. <laughs> I made no sense, I'm so sorry. But now you're gonna go to um, overlay once again by double clicking. And you can lower it to whatever you want, but I want to make these visible, so I'm gonna go for about that. And now you've got like, I guess this is called stitching, I'm not really sure, but I like it, it always like makes my shirts look a lot better. Also for extra detail, you can add highlighting to, um, the, like, I don't know what to call any of this, but like the inner part of this. But what you can do is go underneath every layer, including the shading layers, but make sure it's right above the color. Go back to your line tool and adjust the color to white. Make a thin line around the waistband or whatever you want to call it. And just bend it along with it. And then do the same thing for the rest of the shirt. So it should look similar to this once you're done. And now you're going to go back to Gaussian Blur. And if you had it blurred at three, that should be the perfect amount. So you just click OK. Then go back to layer properties, blend mode overlay, and just make it however you want. I like it like this, so I'm gonna keep it like that. And that's basically your line work.
Okay, so now we're going to be focusing on stitching. For stitching, you're going to make a new layer. And you're going to go back to black and back to your line tool. But this time, go to style and click it once, and it'll have this dotted line looking thing. And that's what we're going to use to create our stitching. So stitching goes right above the like, shirt band or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you're basically doing what you did for like the extra line detail. You're going to bend it along with the shirt. Through the side. And around the neck. And the shirt sleeves as well. Once you're done, it should look similar to this. Now for stitching, you can either make it white or black. But either way, you're gonna go to blend mode and click overlay and adjust it to where you can see it, but it's not like a really vibrant color, if you know what I mean. This is what my black stitching looks like. And if you go to adjustments and invert colors, it'll invert it to white, and that's what the white stitching looks like. And I think white stitching looks better, so I'm gonna keep it like that. And that's how you do stitching. Okay, extra highlighting is pretty simple, but I'll go over it anyway just because. Um, get yourself a new layer again. <laughs> and go back to a white. And make sure this layer is underneath every layer but the color layer. Make your brush size whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, but I suggest probably somewhere around 20 or a little bit under. And your highlighting doesn't have to be perfect or anything. You can literally just scribble like that. And then for the sleeves, you can move the pen and just scribble like all along the shirt. And that'll work for your highlighting. And then you can go to Gaussian Blur and blur it like that. Um, just make it really blurry. There's not a really like, specific number. Then go to Blend Mode again, click Overlay again, and just adjust it however you want it to look. I'm gonna go for this. I think that looks good. And that's literally highlighting. It's that easy. Okay, so one of the last things I like to do is wrinkles. My wrinkles aren't the best, but I mean, you can always try them out. Get another new layer and drag it above every layer except for your template. Um, go to your colors and get black. Take your brush tool. Move it up to about 9 or 10. You can go lower, but you'll see what I'm gonna do. And start to like make wrinkles where you think they would be. Like maybe a fold right here. And a fold right here. And another one right there. And now go to your eraser tool and make it a little bit smaller. And go back and clean up those wrinkles. and just make them look like a little bit sharp at the end. Once you've done that to all the wrinkles that you've made, go to effects, pool, and to smudge again. And basically just smudge up the edges to make them look more feathery. And now you can hit Control shift d and it'll duplicate the layer. Move it up a few pixels with your arrow keys. Go back to adjustments and invert the colors. You can move them up more if you think they should be moved up more. Then merge both of the layers. <laughs> and double click. Make the blend mode overlay. And adjust these wrinkles however you want. I'm gonna go for about that. And now you can go back to the smudge tool, just to make them look a little bit more blended in, you could say. So, I think this looks pretty good. And that's what they look like. And those are your wrinkles. I also have this extra tip I wanted to mention for um, when you want to add images to your shirts. 
but once you resize it, it's like pretty pixely and growing so quickly. I do a certain way to fix that. So in another um, paint.net file, I have this cute little teddy bear thing in the jig. And so I'm going to copy it, make a new link, and paste it. And I'm going to resize it how I want on the shirt. So I like that a lot. I think that looks nice. So once you've resized it to how you want it to look, you're going to look in the bottom left corner and look for a bounding rectangle size. And mine says 0.49 inches by 0.47. All you need to remember is the first. So 0.49 is mine. And then once you've remembered those numbers, hit Control R on your keyboard to bring up the resize menu and go to print size and type in 0.49 or whatever you always said. Hit OK and it'll bring you the resize version. So now copy this, go back to your shirt, hit Control V and drag it over the other one and it looks a lot better and a lot less gross. And that's how you make your images not as pixely. <laughs> and that's all I have for this video. Um, let me know if I missed anything or if there's anything else you wanted to learn. Also, let me know if this made sense. And yeah, I'll try and get another video out later on. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed.